So the point of this video is to pretty much discuss not overplaying a big pocket pair and even as big as pocket kings. So I just want to talk about that and this is pretty much a further reiteration to the fact that you need to be making some big folds with some big hands. So let's go ahead and let's get started. So we do have pocket kings under the gun. We make a standard open under the gun and we get two folds. We get a call by the button which is a pretty much loose passive fish. We get a call by small blind which is a weak type passive opponent. And then we get a huge three bet from player one. Now this guy is pretty much a relative unknown. I only have three hands on him so we can't even really even look at his HUD stats and have a clue as to how good or how bad he is. Now with that said, when he's making such a huge raise here, um, especially when I'm under the gun, I think that we probably have to look at his range to be something like this. I'm going to say ace kings and maybe down to pocket jacks up to pocket aces. Um, I'm not going to put him on anything else because it's such a huge three bet. So I think it's a really strong range. I might even actually make, you know, uh, pocket jacks only going to be around 50% of the time, to be honest. Um, so anyways, let me go ahead and put that range in and we'll put my kings in. Tech lab as well. So we'll put king of spades, king of hearts and we'll evaluate and I am a bit of a favorite against that range. So let's go ahead and think about it. So if I'm a favorite against that range, he's three betting me. Um, in general, pocket kings, I'm fine with four betting and getting it in pre-flop at five and L and 10 and L. And in general, pretty much, I would say around 99% of the time, you should be fine with just getting it in with pocket kings. The only time you don't wanna get it in is if you were played against somebody lots of hands and you know, that they are only four bet or five betting getting an in with pocket aces and that's all they've ever done you play thousands of hands against them but against a bunch of unknowns and against a bunch of bad players at Bavada the micro stakes pocket kings we should always be happy with getting it all in pre-flop so with that said I'm never flatting here um, I'm always going to be four betting and if you five bet jams I'm just calling it off and being okay with it so I do make a raise. I make it to 150, so pretty standard 2x the sizing for a 4-bet versus a 3-bet. And we get a flat, so this is really interesting. This player just calls um, my raise pre-flop, and then he cold calls a 4-bet after I get 3-bet, I 4-bet, and he calls 150. So this is about as fishy as it gets, which is very interesting. Um, this is something you want to take a note on and attack this, because if this player is calling raises like this, then you want to be playing tons of pots with him and bloating tons of pots when you have strong hands. We get a fold by player 6, which is small blind. He called the initial raise. He's definitely not calling a 4-bet, so good fold on his part. And then we get a flat by player one. And so when he flats, this is going to be very interesting. So when he flats, I'm obviously going to be taking aces out. I'm going to take kings out because I have kings. And I'm going to leave queens and jacks in here because this is something where he potentially will be um, three betting and just only having a strong enough cap range where he can call a four bet and hopes to spike a set. And then I'm going to leave ace king in here because I think he could be doing the same with ace king. If he's a really bad player, he might do it with ace queen, but it's very unlikely, so I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it out. And so against that range, we're a huge favorite. And so I think we are feeling pretty happy pre-flop. The fact that he three bet us and he's only calling our four bet um, tells us that he doesn't have that strong of a hand, and we have the best hand right now. And so we go to the flop, and this is pretty much the worst flop in the world for us because if you look at the ranges that he's calling with, there are definitely tons of combos of ace-king. A total of 16 combos of ace-king combined, 12 ace-king off, four of ace-king suited, and then there are six combos of these pairs. So he's got tons of combos of aces, and this player also has lots of combos of weak and medium and mediocre, maybe even like ace-jack type of aces that he's calling with as well. So this is the last type of flop that we wanted to see. And what really sucks is that you're only going to flop an overcard 20% of the time when you have a pocket pair. So the ace is only going to come one in five times, which really sucks for us because it decided to come this one time when we're in a huge four bit pot pre-flop. And the pot's already close to 100 big blinds by the time we get to the flop with this fish in there. 
Um, so I'm not too happy with this flop. And it, if there's any action from either of these opponents on the flop, then we're pretty much done with the hand. I am not going to be, if he checks, I'm not going to be firing a C-bet here because, I, like I said, I think both of these players have an ace in their range. And I don't think we're going to get many hands to fold. So let's go ahead and see what happens. So he decides just to jam all in on the flop, and that pretty much just wants to make you puke. Um, just because you know that he was drawing to an ace, and if he had ace-king, and if we look at his range, he's only going to be jamming with ace-king. Um, yes, he could have had been slow playing pocket aces, but it's very unlikely. I think he would have just got it in pre-flop. So, you know, against that range on this flop, we're always losing, which is unfortunate. So only thing you can do here is just let out a big sigh and fold your hand and be done with it and that's what I did and player five folded as well which is very odd and unusual so you know he pretty much just donated a dollar fifty and he didn't know what he was doing but for me it just you know this is kind of the, one of those moments where you have to just be um, very strict in the way that you play and learn to make good lay downs and make good folds and just don't make a sigh and get tilted and call off that $3.50 for his all-in just to see him throw up an ace. So with that said, I just want to go ahead and highlight this video because this is just a prime example of having the ability and knowing when to lay down a huge hand in a big pot when you know you're pretty much always beat. So if you have any questions about this hand, please let me know. If not, thanks for watching, and we'll see this you at the next video. This video is a part of our Crush Microstakes online poker course, The Complete Master Guide. If you like this course, go ahead and click this link here where you can get this course for 50% off via our special YouTube video using our coupon code YouTube, and you'll get enrolled in this course for only $6. Thanks for watching, and hope to see you over at Microgrinder Poker School.